Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be having a little sneak preview of some of the advanced Niagara stuff I've been working on for my upcoming course. Um, in this case, we're going to be having a look at a for loop inside of a Niagara scratch pad. So uh, lots of really powerful things we can do with this. Uh, so we're just going to go over some of the basic setup. Uh, and the problem we've been tasked with dealing with here is we have a, a sphere uh, source particles. Let's do this. Uh, so we have a series of particles spawning in a sphere and what we want to do is take the highest one and we're going to align a plane uh, to that. So I have my source particles and I have a just an upward facing plane uh, just set in the alignment here. Um, uh, and that's it. That's the setup. Um, nothing very complicated here. Uh, and then we're going to do all the sort of the logic inside the scratch module. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a particle attribute reader uh, and read in our source particles. Uh, but we can't just take the highest value. We don't know what that is. So instead, we need to do a loop, and it's going to loop over every particle in that emitter, take the height, and then check it against the stored value. Uh, and we'll start with zero, and then our first particle will create a value higher than that, and then the next particle higher. And then if it's lower, well, we won't update it, and then we'll just do this kind of loop. And eventually, once we've looped through every particle, we'll find the highest, uh, highest particle. Okay, so... Let's jump on over to Niagara and do this. So, uh, as I say, all we have here uh, on the left is a sphere location, and I'm spawning some particles as a burst and then as a particle uh, spawn rate. Nothing else going on there. And then this one, yeah, it's just a larger particle, uh, and I've made it live forever by disabling kill, uh, and then set the alignment so it's bright facing to be up, so it's like flat and aligned. Uh, so again, nothing very complicated happening in here but uh, in particle update we're going to add a scratch module uh, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this map set now we want to do a for loop and the way we do this is a thing called map four so it looks like a map set so it's another way of kind of assigning uh, data to parameters uh, but the way it works is everything between this map get and this map four will create a loop uh, and so the number of times we're going to loop, we're going to put in there. Uh, and then the way we get that loop value is with a map for current index. And so this value here represents this value. So if you've done um, kind of loops and blueprints, um, I'm not going to go into that here. If that's all a bit new for you as well, check out the course when it's coming out later, uh, later this year. Um, but basically, we're going to go through every particle in the loop. And every time the loop happens, the iteration count is going to go up by one. And that's allowing us to select which is the right particle to now be uh, interested in. And so this value is going to go up. And that's the value here that's represented. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do, well, we're going to start with the particle attribute reader. And this is where we're going to reference our source particles. Uh, and what we can do is we can get the number of particles, uh, get number of particles. And so we need this to be dynamic because if this source particles, if it's got, I don't know, higher spawn rate or any of these values, we can make these changes. We need those values to be updated uh, automatically in our in our scratch module. And that's what this will do. So it will get the number of particles and that's going to be our number of loop. And so if there's 50 particles, we're going to loop 50 times. Every time we do that, this value is going to go up. And what we're we going to get, well, we want to get the position data, uh, position data by index. And so if we know there were 50 particles and we're looping over them with this value going up, this will give us the data about each one. Uh, one thing to note, we are getting position here. We also need to name this attribute position. So the position, particles.position is the name and also the type. Um, it can be a bit confusing. It's very easy to forget that because you're like, oh, I want to get the position. So by default, I think particles only have one uh, parameter that is a position type. Yes. But you see, it's position type, but it's also called position. But there's no reason we can't have lots of positions, and so we need to kind of call it explicitly by name. So um, just make sure you uh, fill in this. It's very easy to forget. I've done it many times. OK, so we are getting the uh, source particles. Uh, we're going to iterate over them however many there are. So that's how many we've set here. This is how many there are. Each time we're getting the position, uh, and we're going to create a transient value uh, and I'm going to make it a float value and I'm going to call this max height um, and this I'm going to set to 
transient. So this is data we're going to use now, but we don't really need it later on. Uh, we're going to create it and save it, um, and then we'll just discard it. And that's what the transient um, name here is is doing for us. Uh, the namespace. Uh, we can also add it here because we need it as an input. So this is going to create our loop, uh, and basically we're going to do a just a comparison. So if I break this position, we're only interested in the z height or the z parameter. Um, and what we're going to do is a if or a comparison. So if the sampled height is greater than the current stored height, uh, then we'll do an if. So if it is, then the value we want to store in our max height is the sampled height. If the sampled height is higher, that's the value you want to store. If the sampled height is lower, we want to use the value we already have uh, and not update it. I'll just rearrange this a little bit. Uh, hopefully we can make this nice and clear. So in terms of the logic in the loop, uh, it's not that much going on. It's just one simple comparison and then storing two values. So if we think about our sort of particles, we've got, let's say, five particles. If you think about our fingertips, first time we go through the loop, we'll check this one. Is it higher than zero? If assuming zero is down here, then yes, it is. We'll save that value. This one, no, it's not. Okay, well, we'll ignore that value. Keep this one saved. This one, yep, it's higher. This one, it's higher. And then this one doesn't go higher. And then eventually we'll see that we've saved the highest value out in that loop. Cool. What are we gonna do with it now? Well, now outside of the loop, we're gonna do another map get, uh, and we're gonna get two values. We're gonna get the particles position. So make sure you're doing particles position and not a new position type. Um, we want the current position of the particles. Uh, and we're gonna get this max height value again. So we've saved it out here in our sort of iteration loop. Let's loop. Um, and then at the end, we've, the last value we've used for this is now gonna be used here. Uh, and we're gonna just take the current position of the particle and then set the position of the particle. Position again, make sure we're using particles position, not just a new position parameter. And we'll do a make make position. There we go. And what do you want to do? Well, we want to use the existing x and y positions, and we want to use the z value for max height. So I'm just overwriting the z component. Oh, I've got an error. Why have we got an error? Because the attribute reader input hasn't been set so we need to set this to the source particles we just type in s it will auto complete for us mm -mm -mm. transient max height is read before being set okay so the value here is being set to uh has not been set anywhere before it's being read so there's two ways we can fix this we can either select it here and set the default mode to be a default value now it's going to use the value of zero before it does any other logic. Uh, alternatively, we could just initialize the value up here. So in the particle spawn, say, we set new, or we could set the, uh, it's a float, it's called, well, actually, let's not do that. Uh, remove, should be able to grab it from down here. There we go. So we can either initialize the value here in spawn, or we can set the, the mode of the value of the parameter to not be fail if previously not set, if that makes sense. Um, so I prefer to do it in here, but it's a bit harder to see because you can't like immediately see that value. Um, both ways are equally valid, but by setting it now to a default mode of value, we can set the default value to zero. Cool, and there we are. You can see that that is working. It's taking the values, um, starting with the plane here at zero, moving up, and it's taking the uh, the top value. Now there are a couple of things that you might not realize, or a couple of bugs. Um, firstly, if I set the spawn rate right down low, uh, and we wait, um, it won't go any higher than zero, because that default was zero. If our, our only particle is below the grid, um, we're not gonna get any result for that. Um, very simple fix, just go into our scratch module and set our default to be a nice big negative number. I don't know here, minus nine, 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 something like that. Now, it'll always pick up the lowest particle because our, our sphere radius is only 100. 
um, when our ID for it's very, very low. There we are, you can see it now going underneath. Um, and yeah, and that works. Now these are GPU emitters, and because of that, we're getting all of the calculations done in the same frame. Um, if we were to try and do this on CPU, it still sort of works, um, but not perfectly. Um, you can see it's lining up, but occasionally we don't get the right result. Uh, so I think the attribute reader isn't getting either the current frame or alternatively it's not doing all of this calculation and then all of this calculation. So I'm not entirely sure why that isn't working. What you want is this emitter to, to finish processing and then this one to process. Um, but it doesn't seem that that's um, always the case because sometimes it works, but then sometimes you get kind of false positives where the uh, the plane isn't in the right, right part of the loop. Um, but we probably want to be using GPU scripts anyway, uh, and GPU works. So, so there we are. Um, yeah, quick recap. Um, map four is where we end our loop. Uh, map get, it will loop between these two um, and just keep doing it for as many times as we say an iteration count, which in this case is our number of particles. The data we're getting is the position um, and we're comparing it to a saved value making sure that our save value is set to a default low value over here, or very, very low value. Um, and then we're just using that to replace the value uh, of the Z position, so the height of our particle. Now there's lots and lots of more complicated things you could do with this, um, but as a sort of a quick setup, I think that works quite nicely um, and allows us to do something that isn't, isn't trivially obvious, um, saving data out from one Set of particles to another, um, but in this case, iterating over every one. Now, obviously, the more particles we have, the more expensive this is going to get. Uh, but as it's all on the GPU, it's not super uh, pricey. Um, even if we had like 50 particles or something like that, it's going to be still. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the spawn rate. Even if we start having 50 particles, it's not going to start tanking our frame rate at all. Um, not going to give us very much information here because it's GPU. But, but there we are. Okay, hopefully that is helpful. Uh, if you would like to know more about Niagara, uh, do check out the courses that I have available on Gumroad and Udemy um, or materials or any kind of like tech arty stuff. Uh, as always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel uh, and letting this all be possible. Um, and if you do have any other questions about tech art or VFX or anything like that, please do reach out. I'm always happy to make a quick video if it's something that I think will be helpful and useful for lots of people. Um, and yeah, check out trying to make for loops in Niagara. It's very powerful, a lot we can do with this. So um, yeah, really cool little technique. All right, um, I think that's it for this video. I will see you all next time.